Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to Worldwide Communion Sunday here at Trinity United Church of Christ, an open and affirming congregation that truly tries to put into practice that no matter who you are or where you are in life's journey, you are welcome here. A few announcements before we move into our worship service today. First of all, this morning we do are we are celebrating communion. So those of you who are at home, if you want to go, if you haven't done so already, go and, and, and find your own communion elements, a piece of bread, um, some juice, some wine, whatever you are comfortable with. Please do that now um, so that you are ready during the communion time. I um, want to let you know that uh, we still are in need of, of, of food for our blessing box. Um, as I said last week and have said the last couple weeks, it has really been um, a blessing, obviously, to people in our neighborhood. Uh, a lot of people are using it, uh, but uh, the problem is that it takes a lot of food to stock that, uh, that box with food for, for those who are using it. So um, please drop your food off at the church. Don't, don't put it directly in the box because of the fact that uh, Karen Adams tries to uh, put the, the right amount of food in and uh, tries to be, have a variety of food in there. So please bring it into the church um, and, uh, and she can uh, restock the blessing box when um, there is a need. If you don't want to bring in food and want to just make a donation, monetary donation, that's fine too. Just send the check with a uh, blessing box in the memo pad of your check and we'll be able to use those funds to, to buy more food. Next Sunday is our crop walk. This is our opportunity to uh, uh, raise funds for hunger throughout the world. 
Uh, and 25% of all the funds we raise here in Waynesboro stays here in Waynesboro. So far, we have 10 walkers. It's not enough to win back the trophy. Need to have some more walkers? I have sponsorships right here. Uh, if you want to walk, see me afterwards or call me or I'll make sure that you get a sponsor sheet. Also, if you want to just sponsor somebody, uh, you can just do two things. You can either write a check uh, to me or to the church and I'll see that your funds get deposited. Or you can go online. You can go to www.croppungerwalk.com dot org slash Waynesboro PA uh, and uh, you can actually make a donation I have an account there you can make a donation um, uh, to me uh, so that your crop money donations can can uh, be registered uh, either way uh, that's uh, an opportunity for you to participate in this ministry that has been happening uh, this is actually the 51st year for the crop walk Waynesboro has had a walk for 49 out of those 51 years. So I think we are like the second oldest crop walk um, in the country. Um, so this is an opportunity for us to participate in something that goes beyond ourselves. Um, I believe those are all the announcements that I have. Let us now can, uh, prepare our hearts and our minds for worship through our uh, morning prelude. Carol Ann?
I'd like to invite you to join me in our call to worship as it's on the screens and in your bulletins. On this day, we gather in oneness with our brothers and sisters to celebrate God's gifts. We hear, we hear the, the call, call to rekindle, rekindle our spirits and to receive strength for our common tasks. On this day, we will share the bread and wine, which are symbols of God's power and love. We, we will open our hearts to accept, to accept these, these gifts, gifts seeking, seeking the grace to walk in God's, God's ways. join our hearts and our minds together in our prayer of invocation. Let us pray together. Almighty God, you have created a tabernacle for the sun, the moon, and all the lights of heaven, and are present to all things in all times, and yet never can be contained. We know that you are not limited by the houses of worship which we build with our hands, but rather that your love always shelters our worshipfulness. Bless and consecrate our gathering in this place and the love we share in this time. May your touch of peace be upon our restless hearts and may we always in greater reverence find you in our midst, even when we find you in the least likely of our sisters and brothers. Amen. Come people of God, out of your separateness, to enter into unity with one another and with all those who seek the presence of Jesus Christ through the breaking of the bread and the sharing of wine. Come confessing the sin that separates you from God and from one another. Let us join together in our prayer of confession. Eternal God of all people and places, we confess to you our lack of oneness with our human sisters and brothers as we begin this celebration of unity in Christ. We have closed our ears to voices of pain and of wisdom when they speak in accents other than our own. We have lacked the vision to see that people living in places we call foreign are as surely your children as we are. Our sensibilities are jarred even by the way our nearest neighbors express their faith in Christ. We cling to the pride of nation and denomination as if we had a special claim on truth and leadership. Gracious God, forgive us and renew a right spirit within us, a spirit of compassion, understanding, and humility. Fill us with the vision of unity in Christ and enable us to incarnate Christ's love so that we may be worthily take partake in the body of Christ and the wine of the new covenant. Amen. The good news in Christ is that God is more willing to forgive our sins than we are to acknowledge them. The God of peace be with you all, keeping you in unity with Christ's people everywhere. Thanks be to God for the forgiveness we receive through our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen.
this is just weird. I'm not sitting in front of my iPad, propped up against an umbrella or something. I actually have people to talk to. Um, so welcome to my children's message. Um, I want you to think for just a minute about playing any game you want to play without any rules. Whatever the game might be. It might get kind of confusing and frustrating and end up eventually hurting people. So all of us that drive pretend there are no traffic rules. What would happen? Okay, Mr. Holland, you're up. <laughs> with no rules, no laws. This, what, this, is my, this might happen with our traffic. All right, what about a soccer game with no rules? Now, that's illegal. You can't push and shove and whatever. You get a red card and get expelled from the game. But if there are no rules, that wouldn't happen. And this one is near and dear to my heart because even though there are rules, this is the way I used to feel some days in my classroom. I mean, even though there's rules, there were days that I felt like that, that there were no rules. So if there's no rules, there's chaos. Things don't work real well. Rules can bring about good results for people who follow them, help people keep safe and at peace, show us how to love and respect one another. Now, if God knows us pretty well, he knows our hearts, and he understands that we're all human, that we often make mistakes, make the wrong choices, and sometimes we act without even thinking. Imagine that. So God gave us some rules as reminders of what's good and right. And he re he gave these rules, and they're called the Ten Commandments. Okay? And you'll notice in the versions that I'm using, the word respect comes up an awful lot. Um, and that's looking up to someone who behaves the way you want to. And if you're in school, and I think they still do it, character counts. Those are the people you looked up to. So here are the Ten Commandments. I'm going to refresh your memory. They're a little, they're a little different because they're written for kids. No matter how old you are, we should put God first in our lives. God is more important than anyone or anything else. We should love God with all our hearts. Number two, sometimes people try to make things more important than God, and then they bow down to those things and pretend they are God, like money and clothes, cars, etc. And that's pretty silly. Don't do that. Respect God. Don't make a pretend God. Number three, God's name is special. Don't use it like any other word. Don't misuse it. Respect God's name. There's that word again. The Hebrew word Shabbat means rest. Remember to take time to rest and talk to God. Respect your parents, Caden. Live in a way that makes them proud and happy. Follow their rules even if you think the rules are dumb. Respect a person's life. Don't take away that person's life. If you get married, keep your promises to each other. Respect, there's that word again, your partner. Respect other people's stuff. Don't take things without asking. Respect others. Don't tell lies about anyone. Don't twist the truth or hide the facts or act in a way to deceive. Be honest. And number 10, respect others. Be content with what's yours. Don't play the comparison game. Be content with what you have. Don't crave what somebody else has. So they're the Ten Commandments. And they seem simple, but they're far from simple. How often do we not follow them? God knows that we're all human and we make mistakes. But God forgives us whenever we falter. We need to continue to work hard to become the humans we are created to be. Now, there's a, there's a time in the New Testament when, uh, when a lawyer asked Jesus which of the commandments was, what the, was the greatest. Now, he could have chosen any of the rules and laws from the Old Testament, from the Law of Moses, or from the Ten Commandments I just read. Instead, he summarized all the commandments in these two. Thou shalt love thy Lord thy God with all thy heart, all thy soul, and all your mind. This is the first and great commandment, and the second is like unto it. Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. 
So being a good human as God has created me to be means following the, to the best of my abilities those 10 rules. Me being a good human does not depend on my religion, does not depend, depend upon my status in life, my race, or my skin color. It all depends on how well I treat others. And with that in mind, I'm going to put on my begging hat. I'm begging for your help. I need your help to fill the blessing box. Right now, I have really no food to put in it, except for what I've bought. So let's be good, kind, compassionate humans that God has created us to be and to donate. I have no problem picking up the food if you want to uh, give us a monetary donation. I've learned how to use Walnut's pickup thing, and it's really cool. So I do that, and I don't mind doing it. Um, if you have food to donate, just drop it in the office, and I will put it in the blessing box. And I've noticed there has been some food put in there occasionally that I know I didn't put in there, so I'm not, not sure who's doing it, and that's, that's fine because I think it's other people. It's a very simple thing to do to show that we care for others. Like Jesus said, that second thing, love others like you love God. I want to thank all those that already donated food and or money. It's greatly appreciated, and the box is used quite often, I'm, like I'm here, like three times a week, at least three times a week trying to fill it. So please, follow the commandments all week as best you can, and if you make a mistake, just say, help, forgive me please, and you'll be forgiven. So let's say a little prayer. Dear God, help us to remember the rules that have been given to us. Help us to try our best to follow them, and when we falter, God, we ask for your forgiveness. Amen. So I'll see some of you online because I'll do it again online and otherwise I'll talk to you another time. Good morning. The first scripture lesson today is from Exodus, it is the Ten Commandments. Then God spoke all these words, I am the Lord your God who brought you out of the land of Egypt, out of the land of slavery. You shall have no other gods before me. You shall not make for yourself an idol, whether in the form of anything that is in heaven above or that is on the earth beneath or that is in the water under the earth. You shall not make wrongful use of the name of the Lord your God, for the Lord will not acquit anyone who misuses his name. Remember the Sabbath and keep it holy. Six days you shall labor and do all of your work. Honor your father and your mother so that your days may be long in the land that the Lord your God is giving you. You shall not murder. You shall not commit adultery. You shall not steal. You shall not wear, sorry, you shall not bear false witness against your neighbor. You shall not covet your neighbor's house. You shall not covet your neighbor's wife or male or female slave or ox or donkey or anything that belongs to your neighbor. When all the people witnessed the thunder and lightning, the sound of the trumpet and the mountain smoking, they were afraid and trembled and stood at a distance and said to Moses, you speak to us and we will listen, but do not let God speak to us or we will die. Moses said to the people, do not be afraid for God has come only to test you and to put the fear of him upon you so that you do not sin. The second reading is from Philippians chapter three, verses four B through 14 from the New Revised Standard Version. If anyone else has reason to be confident in the flesh, I have more. Circumcised on the eighth day, a member of the people of Israel, of the tribe of Benjamin, a Hebrew born of Hebrews, as to the law, a Pharisee, as to zeal, a persecutor of the church, as to righteousness under the law, blameless. Yet whatever gains I had, these I have come to regard as lost because of Christ. More than that, I regard everything as lost because of the surpassing value of knowing Christ Jesus, my Lord. For his sake, I have suffered the loss of all things, and I regard them as rubbish, 
in order that I may gain Christ and be found in him, not having a righteousness of my own that comes from the law, but one that comes through faith in Christ, the righteousness from God based on faith. I want to know Christ and the power of his resurrection and the sharing of his sufferings by becoming like him in his death. If somehow I may attain the resurrection, the resurrection from the dead. Not that I have already obtained this or have already reached the goal, but I press on to make it my own because Christ has made me his own. Beloved, I do not consider that I have made it my own, but this one thing I do, forgetting what lies behind and straining forward to what lies ahead. I press on toward the goal for the prize of the heavenly call of God in Christ Jesus. The gospel reading today is from Matthew verse 21 or chapter 21 verses 33 through 46. The parable of the wicked tenants. Listen to another parable. There was a landowner who planted a vineyard, put a fence around it, dug a wine press in it and built a watchtower. Then he leased it to tenants and went to another country. When the harvest time had come, he sent his slaves to the tenants to collect his produce. But the tenants seized his slaves and beat one, killed another, and stoned another. Again, he sent other slaves, more than the first, and they treated them in the same way. Finally, he sent his son to them, saying, They will respect my son. But when the tenants saw the son, they said to themselves, This is the heir. Come, let us kill him and get his inheritance. So they seized him, threw him out of the vineyard, and killed him. Now when the owner of the vineyard comes, what will he do to these tenants? They said to him, he will put those wretches to a miserable death and lease the vineyard to other tenants who will give him the produce at the harvest time. Jesus said to them, have you never read the scriptures? The stone that the builders rejected has become the cornerstone. This was the Lord's doing and it is amazing in our eyes. Therefore, I tell you, the kingdom of God will be taken away from you and given to a people that produces the fruits of the kingdom. The one who falls on this stone will be broken to pieces, and it will crush anyone on whom it falls. When the chief priests and the Pharisees heard his parables, they realized that he was speaking about them. They wanted to arrest him, but they feared the crowds because they regarded him as a prophet. Here ends the reading of today's lessons. Let us join together in prayer. Gracious God, may the words of my mouth and the thoughts and meditations of our hearts this day be upon you, you who are our rock and our redeemer. Amen. Every year, our church, our denomination, and numerous churches and denominations around the world celebrate World Communion Sunday. We've seen this on our church calendars, but what exactly is it? Why do we celebrate it, or why do we call it World Communion? Many times we just think it's another opportunity to celebrate communion within our local church, but it's more than that, much more. This morning I have enlisted the Reverend Dr. Jim Antel to help answer some of these questions. Currently, Jim is a, a special advisor on climate justice to Reverend John Dorhauer, our UCC general minister and president, but he had also been the conference minister of the Massachusetts Conference for a number of years until he retired in 2018. John Dorhauer was the one that we had preach here in our sanctuary back in 2018 as part of our 200th anniversary celebration. And it was such a joy to have our denominational president and general minister here with us. But I'd like to share with you Jim's message for this World Communion Sunday. Church in Pittsburgh. The 
sought to protect our natural resources and connect the American public to nature's beauty. 1933 saw a third historic event, also an expression of desperation produced by the Great Depression. Hitler was appointed Chancellor of Germany. The vision of those who initiated World Communion Sunday was to heighten our awareness of the unity of Christians around the world. Their hope was to set aside a Sunday every year when congregations would focus on the beliefs, values, and opportunity for service Christians share, whatever their denomination and wherever they might be throughout the world. From its inception, World Community, World Communion Sunday recognized that to fulfill this vision, Christians would need to get to know one another. We would need to hear each other's stories, to walk in each other's shoes, to move beyond our denominational distinctions, and to affirm our oneness in Christ. This vision was quickly adopted by the whole of the Presbyterian Church, and soon thereafter the National Council of Churches, and it continues to be recognized by many congregations and most denominations throughout the United States and around the world. As we gather this year for World Community Sunday, in a time of worldwide pandemic, I believe God is calling the church to expand our recognition of unity. It's time for the church to celebrate not only the unity of the Christian church, but the unity and interdependence of all God's creation. In Genesis 9, God makes a covenant, not only with humans, but with all living creatures. And not only with those that are alive today, but with all future generations. In John 3.16, we hear that God so loved the world, not just humans. As churches across the world come together today to recognize World Communion Sunday, the church has an opportunity to affirm the interconnectedness of all of creation and the life-preserving importance of biodiversity. For people who believe in God, preserving, protecting, and restoring God's creation is not a matter of ideological faith. People who believe in God recognize, as Psalm 24 tells us, that the earth is the Lord's. It's not ours to wreck. This year, World Communion Sunday arrives at a time of pandemic, unemployment, isolation, and discouragement. A time when we are facing our most consequential election and an unknown future. In this moment, the church has the opportunity to inspire the faith to embrace our interdependence with all of creation. Let us also lift up our grief as we lament the ways we are destroying God's creation. Let us acknowledge the ways climate change is amplifying every kind of injustice, whatever injustice your church it cares about, climate change is making it worse. The world already has millions of climate refugees, and in a few years, they will number hundreds of millions. Extreme flooding wreaks havoc on the world's food supply. Extreme droughts are, are rendering huge landscapes uninhabitable. Unregulated fracking, toxic coal ash and failed pipelines are poisoning wells and water supplies. And if you're living in America as a black or brown or indigenous person, the chances are that you've been dealing with a public health crisis all your life because you live near a refinery or a toxic waste dump. While all of this is enormously challenging, we are all 
also living in a time when humanity has all the solutions we need. Can we come together to address the greatest moral crisis humanity has ever faced? Can we be guided by the vision of unity that the worldwide church lifts up today? Can we hear and follow God's call to embrace the unity of creation by implementing the climate solutions that are already available now? I believe we can. I believe that this is what discipleship in the 21st century looks like. And I invite you and your congregation to join me and countless others as we preserve, protect, and restore God's great gift of creation. Amen. The unity and interdependency of all creation. All creation. Jim so eloquently shared how John 3, 16 shares how God so loved the world, not just each of us individually, not just our church, not just Christians, not even just human beings, but all of creation. And as he said, Psalm 24 tells us, the earth is the Lord's. It doesn't belong just to us as human beings to direct and to destroy, but rather all life is interconnected, that web of life. Our text from the Gospel of Matthew for this morning shares a parable of a landowner, which of course, as many, at many times throughout the Gospel writings, is a metaphor for God, God as landowner, who planted the vineyard, which of course is the created world. We, of course, are the tenants but the parable states that when it comes to harvest time, the tenants seize the landowner's slaves, beat one, killed another, and stoned yet another. The landover, landowner sent more and more servants and they treated them all alike until he sent his own son, who they also killed. Do you want to guess who that was? God's desire is... is, is to have we who are the tenants give the produce that is at the heart of God's desire for creation. That's what we are called to be and that's what we are called to do as stewards of God's creation. The best way to do that is to recognize and acknowledge the interconnectedness of every part of this world that we have been placed in to care for, right from the time of Adam and Eve. The best way to do this is to lift up God's call to embrace the unity of all creation. To do that, we must put aside our childish and selfish ways and come together for the common good. For God so loved the world, loved all of us, loved every part of creation that God created, the plants, the animals, the people. That doesn't mean focusing on our differences, but rather focusing on our common mission and our common call to work together to produce the fruits that God wants from us at harvest time. We're currently living in a very divided world. Nation against nation, black against white, Democrat against Republican, liberal against conservative, have we really lost our way so much that we can't even stand talking to each other and being civil in the way that we interact? How sad. But you know, it has to start with one. It has to start with you, with me. It has to start with each one of us as individuals. We have to change the way we look at each other, the way we listen to each other, the way we talk to each other. We have no control over other people, but we do have control over how we present ourselves to other people. Try to stop being negative. Negative in what we post on Facebook, 
or the way that we relate to those we don't agree with, or the ways we describe each other. My friends, there is power in the one. Let it begin with us. Let it begin with me. Amen.
We come to the portion of our worship experience where we share with one another our, our prayers, share with one another our burdens that we try to bear on our own, but there's no need for us to bear on our own. And we celebrate with one another as well. I direct your attention to, the, to your prayer list for this morning um, in your bulletins. Uh, several things to add and share with you. Uh, first of all, um, you have the METS family, M-E-T-Z, that was added to the list for COVID-19 pandemic. Uh, the METS family, that's uh, Angie Cooper's uh, family. Her brother and nephew had COVID and are recovering, but her sister-in-law now has it and is struggling because she ha also has asthma. Um, also, Ray and Ruby Peterson, who is Joy, Ga Joy Guyman's parents, have come down with COVID and are currently in the Chambersburg Hospital. Um, we want to keep in our prayers Ruth Mallon, who is currently over at Quincy. Um, she's been having issues uh, that she's also she's had, had a stroke and now they feel that she might have had some mini strokes. So Ruthie is in need of our prayers um, as she tries to recover from surgery, but also recover now from these strokes and dealing with the isolation that COVID has caused because nobody can get in to visit her. Um, we want to keep in our prayers the family of Zoe Walker. Zoe um, is actually uh, Farah's second cousin, I believe, correct? Second cousin. She's only eight years old, and uh, she passed away this past week. And um, I know Farah's father is getting ready for some surgery, so we want to keep uh, Lowell in our prayers as well. Um, you uh, add the name of Susie Miller, Barb Dunlap uh, shared with us as a friend of hers, uh, Susie Miller. She's suffering from multiple health issues. So we want to keep Susie in our prayers. Um, I believe that's all that I had to add to the prayer list. Does anybody have any other individuals? Yes, Tim. Doris Harbaugh. Let me write that down here. Doris Harbaugh passed away this morning. It's Tim Bryant's aunt. Aunt. It's always dangerous when I write myself notes because I can't read them on Monday morning. All right. Anybody else have an individual or anybody to add? If not, let us join our hearts and our minds together in prayer. Gracious God, we give you all thanks and praise, for you have made us your own through Christ Jesus and given us a new righteousness based on faith. You created the entire universe. The sky tells of your glory. Day and night reveal the genius of your ways. You brought your people out of slavery and gave them your laws and commandments that they might be rich in spirit and clear in vision. Though we repeatedly rejected your ways and destroyed your messengers, you sent your son to us to renew heaven's call. Though the crowds recognized him as a prophet, those who coveted his inheritance seized and killed him. But you raised him from the dead, and now through the power of his resurrection, he stands as the cornerstone of righteousness and the first fruits of the kingdom and the incomparable prize towards which we all press. Therefore, with our hearts lifted high, we offer you thanks and praise at all times through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who taught us to pray together by saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us, and lead us not into temptation, 
but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Amen. As we move into our offering on this World Communion Sunday, one thing that, one of the special offerings that we have in the United Church of Christ happens on this Sunday and throughout this month as well. And that offering is called our Neighbors in Need offering. And I have a slight, a quick video, very brief video to share with you to introduce what our Neighbors in Need offering goes to and is used for. So let's listen to this video. space and time, we want to be faithful stewards in your vineyard. All that we have is yours, our lives are in your hands. Help us to use well all that we here devote to the work of your church. Help us to manage well to your honor and glory all that we retain for ourselves. May you know heaven on earth because you hold first place in our priorities and our daily goal is to serve you. Amen. As we come to the portion of our service where we celebrate Holy Communion on this World Communion Sunday, a few things to share with you. Now, those of you who are here in the sanctuary, um, those of you at home, you should be getting your communion elements right now, but those of you who are here in the sanctuary, we are doing communion a little bit differently for during these COVID times. You all hopefully picked up a plastic bag when you came in, which contained um, a little cup and as well as a piece of bread. Now, please be very careful with these cups. When you lift the tab in order to pull back the tab for the juice, it, it might be a little difficult. That's why you also have a napkin uh, to make sure that you don't spill the juice on yourself because we found that because they're plastic cups, if you squeeze the cup too much, it's like a juice box yeah. and, and it squirts out. So just be careful uh, so you don't dump juice on yourself. Um, but uh, um, so when the time comes, and, and if you need help um, opening your juice, uh, can, uh, Linda is down here and Deb, uh, oh, you're not going to go down there? Okay. I thought you were going to be going down. But uh, Linda is here to help you. Um, if you need to open your uh, juice and you can't open it. Oh, and then please, when you are finished with communion, just put this back in your plastic bag. And we ask that you take that plastic bag home with you or throw it in the, the trash yourself in order for us to protect each other from, from the COVID virus. God in Christ breaks down the walls that make us strangers to ourselves and divide us from one another. 
We are the body of Christ. Around this table, we enact our faith. The body broken is restored to wholeness. Lifeblood poured out brings healing to our world. Let's join together in our responsive communion prayer. God of our grandmothers and mothers, of Eve and Sarah, Miriam and Hannah, Mary and Martha, Mother Mary and Mary of Magdala, of Lois and Eunice, we come to your table today, World Communion Sunday. In this season of repentance, of leaves turning colors, of pomegranates bursting with seeds to celebrate your love poured out for us. You call, you call us, us to stand at your watchtowers to wait, to wait for your vision. vision. You, you call, call us to put on our aprons and, and serve you first. first. Lord of the open and expanding table, we come, we come to, to give, give you our, our appetites for power, power our, our thirst for revenge, our addictions, our addictions to despair, despair our shame about suffering, we come empty-handed, hands out to receive you. Lord of the open and expanding table, we come to partake of your body broken, your spirit living in this bread. We come to drink from the cup of blessing, your blood, your love given for us. Lord of the feast we remember today, our ancestors in faith, our, our Jewish, Jewish and Christian, Christian grandfathers and fathers, and fathers our, our Jewish and Christian grandmothers and mothers, and mothers as, as we come, come to celebrate our heritage, heritage the, the ties that bind us generation to generation, generation one to each other. other. Lord of today and tomorrow, we live between memory and hope for your kingdom come here on earth as it is in heaven. Feed, Feed us, rekindle your, your light in us to be your faithful servants, your seeds of transformation. transformation. Amen. Amen. Jesus, on the night that he was betrayed, gathered with his disciples, and he took the bread, blessed it, and he broke it. And he said, this is my body, which is broken for you. Do this in remembrance of all that I have done for you. After supper, he took the cup and again lifted it high and gave you thanks. And then he said to his disciples, this cup represents my blood, which is shed for you. Take and drink, again remembering all that I have said for you. Take now, for this is the body of our Lord Jesus Christ, broken for us. Take and eat. This cup represents Jesus' blood shed for us. Take and drink, again remembering all that Jesus has done for you. Let us join together and give thanks to God for this great gift. Let us pray together. God of new life, with joy we have received this sacrament of bread and wine, giving you thanks for Jesus Christ, our peace and our hope. Unite your church throughout the world in continuing Christ's ministry of love and servanthood, that your name may be praised in all the earth. Amen.
eyes enlightened, go forth to serve with joy. With hearts made pure, pass on God's love. With, with souls, souls revived, revived we, go we go out rejoicing. rejoicing. God, God has, has revealed to us God's, God's love and, and care. care. All that we have gained is a gift from God. What is most important is not things, but Christ. We, we seek, seek to gain Christ, Christ within, within the, the church, church community. community. We, we dwell, dwell together, together in Christ's Christ body, the, the church. church. Seek the growth of this, of this body for Christ's sake. Bring others to dwell here for their sakes. We, we will, will press, press on toward our, our heavenly call. call. Our, our resurrection, resurrection faith gives, gives us, us hope. hope. Now may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you and remain with you always. Thanks be to God and all God's people said, Amen. Amen.